Hello there. Hello. Thank you for tuning in. Today to, on Black Girl Tea. Wow. Man, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. A it's lot. a lot. Yeah, a lot of um, unrest. It is, it is. Um, so. It's time to unwrap and. Unravel. Unravel. Let's get started. Let's go ahead. topic um, I am definitely very very passionate about uh, it's a lot of unrest in the country it as is. we um, deal with um, racial injustices mm -hmm. and um, systematic poverty um, as well as racial profiling police brutality um, a lot of unrest the last couple of nights as uh, we have a lot of um, protesting uh, as well as looting uh, as with any given fact you always will have people um, that will take advantage of the situations um, so as we dive into this topic yeah. and uh, it's so much to talk about we may not be able to get it all in in the time that we have allotted but we'll try to and do if not best then we can. We'll, we'll do a, a part two yeah maybe we'll a do, part maybe two. a part two so um, Wow, I the week started off um, with the Central Park call. Mm. Um, and so you and I, we just had a conversation about this, but mm -hmm. I've had many conversations this week about this, mm -hmm. is the weaponizing mm -hmm. of yourself so that police can come to do harm potentially right, harm right. or injure or kill an african-american right. african-american man and or woman this is this so just in case the viewers don't know uh tell them about the the, the situation in central park there was a karen there was a karen mm -hmm. real name amy cooper right okay. amy cooper amy cooper and so amy cooper was in a part of central park walking her dog without a leash and this part of central park called the bramble Mm -hmm. um, is where wildlife roams freely and there are a lot of bird bird watchers that go there to shoot um, you know pictures of nature mm -hmm. um, and on this particular day um, she had her dog not on the leash and Christian Cooper mm -hmm. no relation um, wow they had the same last name they had the same last name Wow. Um, Christian Cooper you know advised Amy could you please put your dog on the leash um, and she was livid. I don't know if she was livid at the fact that someone was asking her to do something or the person that was asking her was African American. African American. Okay. And so um, she became so enraged that she decided that walking up on him and he's like, no, don't come any further. She proceeds to point at him and, and, and say, I'm going to call the police and tell them that I'm being, um, I'm being, um, what was the, her exact words? that she's being um, harassed harassed, okay. harassed mm. um, by an African-American man. Mm. And so immediately mm. in me looking at the video, you just weaponized the whole situation by saying his color. Mm. I'm going to call the police. And as they go back and forth, and he's like, okay, please call the police. Please call the police. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm so happy that he had his cell phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we must always be armed. Pull it out and record. We must always yes. be armed. Yes. So um, to make a long story short, she calls the police. And in the midst of her making this call to 911, she elevates her voice. She goes from having, could you please send the police? Um, to, could you please send the police? I mean, I mean, my dog would be harassed. <laughs> And she goes on and on and on and on. And it's just like, you can see this lady is acting. Wow. There was no sense, friend, no sense of 
this man could be killed mm -hmm. by me making this phone call. She did she not did. care. She, she did. did not care. Wow. We see so much of that from the barbecue Beckys mm -hmm. to people, uh, and there's a name and a they meme just, for all of them. They just like calling the police on African Americans. And I'm going to say this because they know that um, the police officers are probably going to use force mm -hmm. towards the African Americans because that's usually what happens. Uh, but it just seemed like to me that uh, this lady in Central Park had a little bit of white privilege going on. And oh, she, she felt like a black man shouldn't be in Central Park bird watching. Right. Which was probably not normal, you know, for most. However, you know, that's what he chose to do. He was there with his camera, minding his business. And here comes this lady with her dog. And he just, you know, simply asked her to put the dog on a leash. Now, as an African American, mm -hmm. when I think of Central Park, I go back. My mind automatically goes back to when they see us. Mm -hmm. And um, because that, that was a traumatic experience for black people. Right. So as soon as I heard Central Park, I'm thinking to myself, why would this lady call the police on this black man mm -hmm. Who's in Central Park. Right. Who has not done anything. But because he asked you to do something, you want to use your white privilege to get him in trouble. Right. Right. Exactly. And, exactly. and we see that so often. And so for every one call um, that we actually are made aware of through <laughs> using our cell phones, mm -hmm. um, videoing it on our cell phones, there are hundreds, friend, mm -hmm. that people actually get arrested mm -hmm. and are actually prosecuted by, guess what, just the intent, just the listening um, to that 911 call. Those calls, those recordings are used mm -hmm. in court against, the, against people mm -hmm. that are innocent. Mm -hmm. But because I picked up the phone and, and changed my voice and I squeezed out some tears and and we don't see the after effects when the police actually right. got there. We don't see that. Right. But praise right. God that he sits high and mm -hmm. looks low mm -hmm. on Christian's behalf that it could have went a lot worse. Right, right. Praise God the brother didn't have no active warrants. That's, I'm thankful that he didn't because he would have been uh, in jail that day. So, yeah. yeah. Yes. And you know mm -hmm. what? I think so many times we see... Um, we see instances that occur like this mm -hmm. that leave people scarred. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. scarred. Mm -hmm. And so every time a phone is picked up and 911 is dialed, we were taught from, I don't know about you, friend, but mm -hmm. I was taught, um, raised up as, as a child. Yeah, I was a child one time, that's funny. Um, but I was taught to trust the authorities. Whew, They're here to protect and, and to serve. And so, um, so we remember, live in a day and age. We live in a different time. So a lot of that is still is still ingrained in the older mm -hmm. the older the generations, more generations. The more seasoned generations. Mm -hmm. And so the younger generations, they don't know that. Mm -mm. They only see all of the negative things mm -hmm. that are happening mm -hmm. that are so so in your face, mm -hmm. but we're gonna get to that in a second. I want to jump before the horse, uh, the cart before the horse. Mm -hmm. Wow. Who? So then we have uh, mm, the jogger Ahmad Arbery um, that was basically minding his own business, mm -hmm. and uh, he decided to take a jog. Um, and he stopped to view a home that was in construction. Uh, and because of the neighborhood that he was in, um, he was profiled. Uh, they felt like he shouldn't have been there. And they want to know who he is. Um, and that resulted in the loss of his life. Um, and, and what's crazy is this isn't new. It's just that 
now it's being filmed. Right. So right. we are able to see um, what is actually occurring, what is actually happening. And it's mainly happening to people of color. That's true. Uh, it's mainly happening to our black men, black women, our children. Um, and because of this issue, that is where we go into where uh, we don't really trust the police. Um, with Ahmaud Aubrey, there's, I literally, um, before I had my home built years mm -hmm. ago, mm -hmm. I literally went into like every house that was mm -hmm. in construction mm -hmm. within all the surrounding neighborhoods I wanted to build. Um, we wanted to build our home in. Mm -hmm. And hundreds of times mm -hmm. walked through saw the lumber on the floor mm -hmm. walked through look at the looking around looking at everything looking i've even gone up to houses that had for sale signs mm -hmm. in the front yard and peered through the window i mean everybody can say that they've done that everybody has mm -hmm. has done that and, everybody and not even just peering through the window i literally they've left the door open and I walked in, mm -hmm. and it's carpet and everything else, but you're just walking around, right. looking, you like that new home smell, or maybe you're getting ideas, or whatnot. That's not a crime. It's not. It's Ahmaud not. Ahmaud Arbery did not commit a crime. You have people that decided to uh, take the law in their own hands. Mm -hmm. Now, if you thought that he was not supposed to be there, maybe it was a neighborhood watch program, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. then... Uh, Again, you call the police, but you don't become the police right. because you were the police at one time. Right, right. But nowadays, that's kind of tricky too, calling the police because um, you never know which way it's going to go. Right, right. It's like a box of chocolates. Right. You never know you never which know one you're going to pick out of that box. Get. Right. And usually, if the police officers show up and that person is African American or they are a brother, um, they my, ask questions later. Right. They shoot first. They mm -hmm. ask questions later. Mm -hmm. They arrest you first. They beat you up first. And then they ask questions later. Um, much like, let's go here for a minute. The CNN news reporter. Oh, he's Omar he's, he's telling you that he works mm -hmm. for the news outlet. Giving you his credentials. He's giving you his credentials. Right, right. But... You're not trying to hear what he's saying. You are arresting him and taking him to jail simply because of the color of his skin. And then when you finally, because they always say we have to have more evidence, but they usually only need more evidence in certain cases from what I'm seeing. And it, this is not made up. This is their track record. This is what they do. Mm -hmm. And this man is arrested He's working. He's his doing his crew. job. His okay, him and his whole crew. Mm -hmm. And then once they find out who he is, or they get their evidence, so to say, then they let him go and did not give him an apology. They um, just let him go. And that came from higher up. That decision. Mm -hmm. um, I read that. Um, I do believe the the governor mm -hmm. apologized to mm -hmm. someone at CNN um, on behalf. Mm -hmm. of the state for for him being detained my thing about that is that he was reporting two blocks from a white reporter counterpart, mm -hmm. counterpart mm -hmm. from cnn who was not arrested at all mm -hmm. detained no no nothing so when we look at the grander picture mm -hmm. it is it's so blatant in your face that there's no way to ignore it. There's no way um, our community should not feel a certain way. Right, right, right. There's no way. You know what? There's no denying. I, I hate to say it, but I'm going to say it. Go ahead and say it. Dear white people, mm -hmm. there is no denying That's that there is there. racism in the United States of America. There's no denying that. We're not making it up. Mm -mm. It's been happening to us for decades. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's been happening to us since we came off the boat. Right. But I didn't want to go back that far. Wow. It's been happening to us for decades. Yes. We are not imagining it. Right. It, does, it happens everywhere, every second of every day. Right. 
Right. Right. As my friend just said, guess what? We're just filming it now. Right. It's just being filmed now. It's just being filmed now. Uh, racism has been going on a long time. Um, and I believe that it is actually systematic. Um, and that they have people in certain places. They do certain things. Uh, even in the midst of a pandemic, uh, I heard D.L. Hughley say, America finds time to be racist. <laughs> right. They will always find time to be racist. Uh, but my question is, why is America so intimidated by blacks? Why is America so intimidated by our black men? Why? Um, I just, I mean, I do have some thoughts, but um, I'm not going to say that. However, I do have my opinions on why they may be the way that they are towards us. But we have to remember, it's been our fathers, it's been our brothers, mm -hmm. it's been our uncles that have went to war for America, that are still right. at war for America. Um, this country was built on the, on the back of slaves. We, we built this country, okay? Uh, we were forced to do it, but it was done. And it's just sad that they are so offended by us, that they're so intimidated by us, um... It's just sad how they do us. You, you know, know what, friend? I'm going to tell you where there's no offense when it, when it comes to African Americans, okay? There's no offense when we're entertainers. Mm -mm, not at all. When we're um, professional athletes. Athletes, There's yes. no offense there right. because guess what? We're making money. We're right. a commodity. We are a human commodity. Mm -hmm. So there's no offense. There's no offense when it comes to our music, our culture, mm -hmm. all things blackness. Right. Oh, they you love, love us they, then. Right. They love black culture, but they don't love black people. Mm. And they, they use us as, as puppets because we are naturally, and I'm, I, I'm just going to go on and say it. We are naturally good at everything. We're naturally good at music. We're naturally good at sports. We are just naturally good. We are dominating in almost every arena there is. But... Can I say this? That's just the way God made us. You can't get mad at the creator for creating. Right. That's just the way God made us. So, back to my arbor. He's running. He's jogging. And you have um, two uh, white men who, not, not two, but three, who decided to follow him with the intention of taking his life. There's no way that you can tell me that this was yes, not premeditated. I agree. They had the intention on taking his life because he was a black man. And he felt free running or jogging in that neighborhood, obviously. So that tells me he, he must have been there before. He must yes. have been used to it. And you know what, friend? And even with, um, here's another thing um, attached to victims. Mm -hmm. We want to pull up mug shots. Ooh. We want to pull up psychiatric records. What has they nothing only, to do with the do other? That. They only do that to us. They and you know what? You find the worst picture to put on the news to represent the victim. But if you are of any other ethnicity, guess what? Your high school picture going to be on there. Your wedding picture. You could have killed your whole entire family. And guess what? They're going to find that pastor's, um, that pastor's or that deacon's um, usher board number 29 picture and it's going to be the best picture they can right, found. Right. It's going to always favor them. Right. So just that right there is racism. It's racism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let the victim be a victim. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's not victimize them even more right. by demonizing them once they're gone. Right. And the torment that is that takes and is done to a family of a victim Who's already grieving. Who's already grieving. I've already lost my child. Right. My brother, my sister, right. my father, right. my right. cousin. I've already lost someone in my family. And now you're showing the worst bits of them. Right, right. In 20-second in increments. Right. I will say this, friend, since I'm here. Since I'm right up here on the sidewalk. Go ahead and say it, friend. Okay. The media, my God, mm. will take 
sound bites of everywhere and it depends i i hear um bishop say this a lot it depends on what what um media outlet you're looking at um how it's going to be skewed and turned or whatever at the end of the day the victim is still a victim, still a victim. they still each each victim has a name a so call Ahmad by Ahmad Aubrey. Call his name. Call his name. Amen. Amen. You know what I found? In police, in, in all police involved shootings or any act towards an African American, a black man, they always try to justify mm -hmm. the unjustifiable. Right. You cannot justify taking this man's life mm. the police department in georgia they are at fault all of them should lose their jobs mm. because they waited two months to arrest these men that committed this act mm. against ahmad that is what the outrage is about because had I, I use this as a scenario, had I, a black woman, ran outside and not killed but beat down a Karen. Say if I run outside and beat down a Karen today. It's two things going to happen to me. One or two things. Either I'm not going to make it to the police department because they're going to take me out on site. Mm -hmm. Or either they're going to beat me up, take me to the police department, and give me a long list of charges. Yes, I agree. These men killed this man. Mm -hmm. 25 years old. Yes. They killed this man. They videoed it and went home. For their evidence. Evidence for what? Is it the KKK? Did they need is what was was that an initiation? Did they need that for something? You know what? What's amazing when the third perpetrator, mm -hmm. murderer, mm -hmm. was arrested, he actually believed that whole entire time. See, people will flip on you. Mm -hmm. They flip on you like a pancake, like he a thought, flatbed. He thought he was doing, he doing he, a favor. Yes, he thought he was doing a favor. But mm -hmm. guess what? But because they were so confident in their lies that each of them kind of gave each other an alibi to wow. some sort. And so once the covers were pulled back, friend, they saw that, oh, okay, oh, he really circled around. Greg McMichael said, oh, Roddy circled around on the other side of him. Oh, so you detained him. So now this, that... Oh, you detained. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a charge. Mm -hmm. Check. Mm -hmm. So, out of, out, truly out of, I believe, out of being so confident that I am, I am a white male. Mm -hmm. That white privilege. Again, white privilege. Mm -hmm. That I am a white male, and it's okay. Whatever we do, we took his life, and we took it for a reason. Even though, when you look at the video footage, little, little white kids have been in there. Well, white couples have been in there. Single white people have been in there. Mm -hmm. um, and a young man that they say, quote unquote, was um, Ahmad, had went in there. All of us don't look the same color. He was All black people don't look alike. We all don't look alike. Mm -hmm. He was light skin Cause in with that, tattoos. In that video, it did not, it did, look, it like did not look like it, him. It, he, he may have visited that property at one point or another, mm -hmm. but the video that they showed, when I first saw it, I didn't think that it was him. No, because it's not. Right, right. <laughs> I didn't think that it was him. So that's a, 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 a sad, sad case down in Waycross, uh, Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, not far from where we are. Prayers to Ahmad's family, um, his mom, for losing him at, at such an early age uh, to, poli well, to corruption, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and I will say that racism uh, has nothing to do with the color of your skin, but the content of your heart. Mm -hmm. It's what you have in your heart, and it's, it's evil, is what it is. Um, um, there was a lot of protesting on last night, mm -hmm. um, and even as we talked about CNN, CNN mm -hmm. in Atlanta, right. uh, I feel like 
that there was a reason uh, that people gathered at CNN uh, yeah. last night for the protesting mm -hmm. against uh, the um, racial injustice that was done toward um, George Floyd, Mr. Floyd. Uh, people protested on last night. Mr. George Floyd, um, another um, African American, uh, was stopped by the police. Uh, they have different stories of um, a forfeited check, a of, of, uh, fake check, or a fake $20 bill. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, owner of the store called the police on Mr. Floyd. Okay? Um, and the um, Minneapolis Police Department uh, stated that Mr. Floyd um, was resisting arrest. However, hmm. that's not what we saw. <laughs> Mr. Floyd uh, was already handcuffed um, and for some reason you have a police officer that decided that he wanted to uh, kneel on Mr. Floyd's neck for about 10 minutes. Eight uh, minutes and 46 seconds yes. to be exact. Yes. That's almost, a long time. Almost nine minutes. Mm -hmm. Where uh, we also saw another angle from the video where someone was actually also holding him at his waist and his feet. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also heard that the uh, police officer that decided to put his knee on his neck, that they used to work together at a nightclub. They did security together. So you knew him. Wow. You knew exactly who he was. Wow. So were you intimidated by him? Were you jealous of him? Hmm. Now, when I saw them take Mr. Floyd out of the car, I, and I didn't know he was a basketball player, but when they took him out of the car, I was like, okay, the, Mr. Floyd, big dude. Now, big dude. You know, um, but his friends and his family referred to him as a gentle, gentle giant. giant. Mm -hmm. And it took three of y'all to hold him down and he's already handcuffed and he's telling you i didn't listen to the video i didn't watch the entire video mm -hmm. i could not watch the entire video because it just the thought of it grieves my spirit um but he told you he couldn't breathe which reminds me of another case of another guy that was selling loose cigarettes i believe it was mike brown mm -hmm. He can't breathe. So you have Mr. Floyd here. He can't breathe again. He's telling you he can't breathe. You know what? Even in watching um, them take Mr. Floyd out of the out of his car, mm -hmm. it was not when when I heard them say he was resisting arrest. I was like, oh, okay. I, I'm wanting to see some punches, some blows, some, and no one, something. And not one time. And, and not one, one time, time did they show where he, no videos captured Mr. Floyd resisting arrest. And he was already in handcuffs. I heard one police officer say, once you have the, the person in handcuffs, they are no longer a threat. What can he yeah, do? He's subdued. What can he do? He can't do anything. But you got one evil cop. Two, three evil cops. That decide no. that they want to inflict pain. Actually, four, because you had one, one standing watch. One standing watch to keep people away. Right. Because they decide that they want to inflict pain on this black man for twenty dollars. Really? He's unarmed. He hasn't hurt anybody. He hasn't killed anybody. But you want to inflict pain on this black man, and you know you're being taped. Okay. Matter of fact, you even posed for the camera. He did, and he had he had such a sinister smirk on his face and his eyes was just nothing it was just coldness it was like it was uncaring he read i think in his mind friend who jesus he has some type of white privilege to where he he's thinking in his mind i don't hear for something <laughs> that we may not know he's he's going to get away with this injustice it, it, that almost what it looked like to me that he's they not gonna do nothing to me. Now think back, you know, and all this happened within 
a month's time. Now think back, you have two perpetrators that already have killed a black man. It took two months for them to, re to arrest mm -hmm. them. And then you have this other perpetrator that uh, has killed a black man that is a police officer. And he, in his mind, it almost looks as if he knows that he's going to get away with it. That's the only thing I can think of. But you know what, friend? There's such a blue culture, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The blue code of conduct mm -hmm. um, and brotherhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's, there's such that um, environment, that culture that will, whatever happens, will cover each other. Right, right. And so that's why you had Officer Tao standing there on watch, mm -hmm. like, don't bother me. I got you, which away. was his brother-in-law, right. I might add. Right, right. So I, I'm going to do um, a vigil. I'm on post mm -hmm. to make sure no one comes up on you, mm -hmm. even though you hear people begging for you to stop. Right, because you're killing him. You're killing him. The 30 seconds that I watch, 15 on the front, 15 on the end, and you and I just had this conversation. Um, it messed me up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, for various reasons that I won't get into right now, um, which you just had to calm me down because mm -hmm. I, I was uh, crying my eyes out. Mm -hmm. um, it is much bigger and much deeper than to not do anything about it. Right. There can't be another George Floyd. There can't even be another Breonna Taylor. I mean, a, another senseless act of violence on black again, people. On black people. On blacks. On, blacks. on African Americans. It's mainly on blacks. So let's talk about uh, this. Um, and you probably know more about the story than I do, but let's let's just just do a reference on how blacks are treated when they are taken into custody or presumed to um, have done something um, wrong. Versus uh, Dylan Roof, Was, is that the white guy's name? Um, Dylan. Uh, the, sh I, the shot the parishioners in the church. Yes. Okay. So. Let's run down the facts on how he was treated when he was arrested. Number one, that was, you are armed and dangerous. You have taken out people, okay? Lots. Right, right. Uh, majority of them are black. Uh, that was a black, uh, yeah, Af that was African American. American. African American church. He, he, he sought out an African American right, church. Right, right, right. So when the police arrive on the scene to pick up Dylan Roof, you would think that you, were going, that you was going to take Dylan Roof out. You would think, because he's a carnage. He armed. Fred, tell them how they treated Dylan Roof, please. Well, we had a whole conversation mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. And on the ride mm -hmm. to the police station, he's hungry. So mm -hmm. we stopped to get him something to eat. <sighs> he has a, a bulletproof vest that we put him on. We've done all, we've taken all of these measures to protect him because he's a suspect. Mm -hmm. So the protection that they had for Dylan Roof was not there for George Floyd. Right. And it was a simple thing as maybe a fake $20 bill. Maybe he did bounce a check. How many people had, do you know had bounced a check? Mm -hmm. So you gonna take me out? So I just want to say that you knew who I was. You were already intimidated by me. You do not like the color of my skin. And you, you are an opportunist. You use this opportunity mm -hmm. to kill me, to take out a black man, and you did it on national TV. Now, you were suspended from your job. However, you were not arrested. You did not get arrested until there was a public outrage, mm -hmm. and then you were arrested. But just because you were arrested does not mean that you're going to face charges. You know what, friend? I I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but I'm gonna have to say this. I'm gonna say it, friend. I saw. Did you? Did that look like him? Not at all. That is not the same. So person. who y'all arrested? Who y'all? Who are you? Who y'all? Who's <laughs> that is not, Who's 
smug shot is that? You know what? They're probably protecting him. Right. He's probably long gone somewhere, and they are using this to try to hush mm -hmm. the outcry, the cries of the black people. I do believe that George Floyd's blood is crying out in the streets of Minneapolis. There has been no rest there right. since that happened. And then it's taken to other states where there's been riot, rioting. And of course, um, there may be peaceful protesters, but with, with that, there's always opportunities. Mm -hmm. So while we're trying to protest peacefully, you got people breaking in the stores, and it's not just black people. It's all colors it's and all ethnicities. Colors. Yes. It's all colors. And okay? races. Mm -hmm. So while you have people that are trying to protest for this man's life to get mm -hmm. justice for this man's life, you have opportunists who are out. And so while y'all protesting, y'all got all the police attention over here, I need a few things at the house. So I'm going to grab this and, and do this. Not saying that it's right. I'm not saying that it's right. But I feel the cries of the black community. You know what, friend? I had um, earlier today. I made a a post on um, on Facebook, and by the time this video is edited, it will be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, so I made a post um, about looting mm -hmm. and about um, rioting and protesting. Not a favorable one. Um, I don't believe that we should do a crime with the crime. But you know what? God has a way of humbling even the even the called. Mm -hmm. And so I'm watching um, Trevor Noah. Mm -hmm. um, he posted a video. Trevor on... Noah for CNN? Mm-mm. Okay, which, mm -mm. News, which news out there? The doing? Daily Show. Okay, The Daily, Daily Show. Show. He's a comedian. Okay. And so I'm watching um, this video that he posts about looting and rioting. He, he talked about a variety of racism. And it hit me by listening to him. It... There is, I'm going to go back just a little bit, if you guys will indulge me, just to go back a little bit. We came over on contracts mm -hmm. in the bottom of a ship. Talk about it. We came over. We were sold, like with the bill of goods, we were sold. I'll take you, I'll take you, I'll take you. Mm -hmm. We were sold with a sheet of paper. We mm -hmm. were examined. We, our teeth, everything, good stock, no good stock, all our Flaws and everything were all put on a sheet of paper and we were weighed and you, we were sold. You, you had to be healthy mm -hmm. and strong and you had to be able to bear children. Right. So if, you had, And you had to be able to work. And if you couldn't do any of those things, guess what? Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, you were going to be killed. You were going to be thrown overboard or you were going to be killed once you got to, mm -hmm. to shore. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a contract. Mm -hmm. We were... We were Sold by a contract, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I'm bringing, I'm gonna bring it up a little bit further. Mm -hmm. So that same contract, now that we are citizens of the United mm -hmm. States, we have a, we have that same contract for all of us as a nation. We have that contract as a member of society, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so, if at any time, what I see now is that. There's been a breach of contract. It has been. That is the civil unrest that we're seeing. But can I say this? It may have been a breach in the contract, but some of our contracts was different from the beginning. Right. I agree. I some, agree. Some, some people, depending on your color, you got a different kind of contract. Right. Right. Um, MLK, he been... This is, this is what Martin Luther King has been or what he was marching for, for the past over 40 years. This is what this man fought for. Mm -hmm. I never thought in my wildest dreams at 43 years old that I would see protesting in these streets. That was something that happened back then. Right. I didn't think that I would live to see that happen again this is the this is what mlk was protesting for for freedom for equality for the same rights as everybody else if i call the police and your job is to protect and serve it should not matter what color i am 
You give me the same rights that you give my Caucasian counterparts. Don't treat me differently mm -hmm. because my skin is different. And I and 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 I'ma say this, but will we ever? I posted this question yesterday on my page. Will we ever see MLK's dream? Will my son? Because I have a, I'm raising a man, okay, a black man, my son. He is 19 years old, and he can fit the description at any time. He's black, he has locks in his hair, and he's tatted. But I know his heart. So will my son ever be judged, will not be judged by the color of his skin, but by the content of, of his heart. Amen. He six one. Big dude. If you if you look tiny Caucasian fellow, you might be a little intimidated. Mm -hmm. But that's the way God made him. He has to be strong. He had to be strong. So, but I know his heart. He still answers me, yes, ma'am, and no ma'am. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, but what I see with these young men, if you back them in a corner. If you singing. if you provoke them, what do you what do you think you're gonna get if you provoke them? Mm -hmm. All of them gonna come out fighting. So it's it's just a lie. It's I'm I'm, I'm very passionate about it. Mm -hmm. I'm praying for our young black men. I hate to see even when I think about my 15 year old daughter. I hate to even think that she's seeing riots and protesting and racial inequality and um, prejudices and racism. I hate for her to even think that I hate to even think that she sees this. Matter of fact, I'm going to say this. She has a friend and she wanted to go to her friend's house. Her friend is mixed. Okay. By me knowing that, and knowing that the grandmother was Caucasian, I was afraid to let her go. But she don't know that. They're oblivious. They don't know. But in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, oh, God. And I don't want to think like that. But I know at any moment, they very well, she may experience racism or they very well may not like this little black girl. Mm -hmm. Steve. Yeah. Yeah. I think that um, the unrest that we're seeing, mm -hmm. the looting, mm -hmm. the rioting, is because it goes back to that contract. Mm -hmm. It goes to the fact that we feel that our contract hasn't been held up. And it hasn't been. It hasn't. And right. so that starts that starts at the top, starts at the head and trickles down. So when you're when there is disorder in our governmental system, mm -hmm. right? Racism has perpetrated and penetrated into, into local, state, and federal mm -hmm. governments. Mm -hmm. And so when you have vitriol that's coming out of the White House continually, mm -hmm. um, even so much so that the, protest, the protesters that were protesting outside last night, um, on Friday night, mm -hmm. Dogs were brought out. Right. I wasn't born in the 60s, but I've seen enough right. video footage. I've seen enough movies. I've seen enough of everything to know that is very divisive. As a president, the stuff that comes out of the White House, racism, right. there's a vision. That's the vision right there. Right. And he, he quoted a known, a known Nazi um, quote yesterday he said uh when the looting starts the shooting starts right and i want to say that that added fuel to the fire to the fire it did because you have uh a society of of poor black people uh blacks have been oppressed for a long time mm -hmm. we have been oppressed uh you have oppression you have depression. Yes. You have PTSD. Uh, there is lack in the black community as far as resources. 
uh, financially. You have people that have not worked. Mm -hmm. We are going through a pandemic. Right. They have not gotten their um, um, unemployment checks. Or stimulus checks. Stimulus checks. Mm -hmm. They are still trying to live. They're still trying to eat. They're still trying to pay bills. They're still trying to uh, take care of their families. Then you have a, a, a person in the White House. It's easy for him to say that. You know why? Because he ain't going to be doing no shooting. He's going to be somewhere in the, in the barracks and we're high and, and they're going to protect him. So it's easy for you to spew those type of things out of your mouth. It's easy for him to say that. You know what? It, um, <clears throat> we see overwhelmingly that, yes, we are in the midst of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so you already have people that have been sheltered in for two and a half months, friend. Mm -hmm. So there's a pent up frustration right. of all, all of this. And now this. So they feel like, blacks feel like we have nothing to lose. We have nothing to lose. You already killing us. We have nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. Nothing Listen, to lose. let me tell you. I might be wrong. But I'm just, I'm going to say it anyhow. I, uh, uh, buildings, I, buildings on fire don't bother me. At buildings burning don't bother me. Uh, Target is a million dollar corporation. They will, they will rebuild that in no time. What upsets me, what bothers me is a loss of life. That's what bothers me. Uh, the killing of innocent black people bothers me. Racial profiling bothers me um the lack of resources in the black community that bothers me um but million dollar corporations cnn target don't bother me not at all you know what all of those things i'm piggyback on you all of those things bother me what bothers me about the buildings the burning part what bothers me is the mom and pops Mm -hmm. A lot of us don't have insurance. Right, right. So it's not so easy for us to rebuild, rebuild. Mm -hmm. when we've been there for 40 years and we, we make enough or we bring enough in to pay our bills mm -hmm. and meet our needs. Mm -hmm. Those places won't be coming back. They won't be. But they, were, uh, they have already been affected by the previous pandemic. Right. So it's pandemic on, on top, top of pandemic. pandemic. Yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> well, friend... Um, I'm going to say this. I still believe God. I do too. I, I'm, I'm still uh, praying for mm -hmm. peace in the land. Uh, we as a black people, I'm going to say it again, have been oppressed for years. Right. Uh, we have prayed for years. We have marched for years. Uh, we have protested for years. Uh, blacks are not the first to burn buildings because mm -hmm. you have the KKK who burnt stakes and they burnt black people on crosses. Uh, they set things on fire too. They, mm -hmm. they looted too. Mm -hmm. uh, two wrongs don't make a right. It does not at all. Uh, but I still believe God. I'm still praying. Uh, I pray more now than I ever did before. And it's a joke, but it's real. Because I want to know what part of Revelations are we on today? Because I just feel like the Lord <laughs> is on his way. Because I just don't think that he's going to allow us to keep going through all of this suffering. Yes, some suffering will occur. Mm -hmm. But I just believe that um, God is, is soon to return. And the prayer was, his prayer was that your faith fail you not. Right. So even during this time, even this time of pandemic, this time of uncertainty, we still have to hold on to our faith. So every day I'm believing more and more. God, I believe you. God, I trust mm -hmm. you. God, I know you care about me. I know you care about us. And when you have black children, them prayers are different. I'm mm -hmm. telling you. It's that's a covering. A, that's a different kind of mm -hmm. prayer when you're praying over black children, especially young black males. Mm -hmm. So I still look to the hills from which cometh my help because my help cometh from the Lord. I still believe that God is going to see about his people, see about his children, 
racism will not win. We've read the end of the book. Right. Racism will not win. It's still prevalent, but that doesn't mean that it's going to win. Uh, and we still have to keep looking up. We still have to keep trusting God. We still have to keep believing God and just knowing that um, he's on our side. You know what? I, I know this to be true. Um, and I pray that I'm wrong, mm. but I know this to be true. Um, every day there are George Floyd's. Some we hear about and some we do not. And so it is so important that we make good use of our time during our protests and rallies that mm -hmm. we hammer it home. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Help me, Holy Spirit. During, um, and we're still in the midst of the pandemic, mm -hmm. Our state capitals around the U.S. flooded with very good people, mm. right? No, no thugs, very good people with assault rifles, right? Tactical vests, mm. rifles with, with scopes on them, taking over state capitals on the lines of state capitals, right? Mm. But guess what? The, the, fast forward. Guess what? Protests are going on, mm -hmm. but everybody's a thug because it's a different color. Right. No weapons let some African-American people, some black, some brown and black people go into any state capital with an assault. He ain't going to make it. To he ain't going to make it. He ain't gonna make it. He's not going to make it, let alone hundreds of us flooding the whole corridor, spilling out on the line walking around with dogs like like they're part of the police force and the police standing there while they're screaming in their face, nothing. Mm. No, no, no pepper spray friend. Mm. No bullets, no rubber bullets, no none of that stuff. Wow. Because guess what? They were very good people. Wow. Well, I do believe that, matter of fact, they're having a, a, a MAGA rally tonight. Uh, MAGA, y'all know, Make America Great Again. Mm -hmm. I do believe that... Um, a part of the MAGA agenda, um, they consider black people um, to um, be, um, what's the word he uses for them? Disposable? No. Uh, they consider white people to be very good people and they consider the black people to be... Oh, um, very bad people, thugs. Very, yeah, they consider black people to be thugs and they consider the white people to be very good people. Honest, um, citizens, right. upstanding, upright. Right, right. But as y'all president said, as y'all president said today, he said, MAGA loves the black people. That's what he said today. Uh, so they having a protest, a MAGA rally tonight at the White House. Mm -hmm. After you sick the dogs on the protesters last night, now you don't have a, a, a MAGA rally uh, at your uh, at the White House tonight. How, how long did you say he got in office? Not 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 short enough. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, black people vote. Okay, <laughs> black brown color people. Listen. It is your duty mm -hmm. to vote this election. Do not sit this election out. I know that we don't, don't have, have good choices, good choices mm -hmm. but the main agenda needs to be to get your current out of the office. That's, that's the main agenda. And if we get together on this like we do when we do the Cuban Shuffle. I'm trying not to laugh. We can get some things done. Hey, Amen. So please, that is how we are going to trump <laughs> this administration. Right, right. Color people, we need to vote. If you do not have a voter's registration card, that should be your goal to get one. That should be your goal to vote this election. If you are 18 and up, you should be voting. Everybody should be voting. And now they're making it easier for us because of the pandemic. 
they're doing paper ballots. I know, I know. A lot of us don't trust the system because it has been set up for us to fail. However, you do your part. I believe there's a scripture that says, you do the possible, God will do the impossible. Yes. So please, this is my beckoning call to everyone that watches this video. Make sure you go out and vote. Yes. Um, well, friend. Woo! That's it's a, a lot. lot. It's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. lot. And I'm still full. I'm still full. Yes, it's a lot. And Ooh. I know this video is going to be a long one, but it um, is much needed. And we actually, again, we were supposed to shoot just racism in America a couple of weeks ago, about three weeks ago now. Mm -hmm. And um, we're just getting around to mm -hmm. doing it now. Um, but really, it's, it was God's timing. Right. It was right. God's timing. Um, right. And for just for all of the families, I will continue to pray for for every family that's been affected and they've had a, lo a loved one just taken from them wrongfully. Right. Right. Um, you and I have experienced that mm -hmm. in our families. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, it's a horrible feeling. Right. And to feel that the, um, judici the judicial system and the police department, just that whole, that whole culture um, environment is failing you is not a good feeling as a relative. It's not. It's not. It's not. Because you, you see no justice and you feel like you're backed up against the wall. And when someone is plead down to almost no time, that's a hard thing to swallow. Mm -hmm. And we haven't even we haven't even touched the tip of the iceberg, really. The tip of the iceberg. We haven't even talked about George Floyd's preliminary autopsy report. Mm -hmm. None of that stuff. Um, I will say this: uh, as as we try to wrap this thing up and we try to squeeze a, a cork into, into a, a pint, pint. <laughs> so we trying to do this. Um, black, the endangered species. However, even endangered species are protected. Mm. Until next time, yes. right here on Black Girl mm -hmm. Tea. Mm -hmm.